22,600 damage on the regular shock train maxed and 130,000 damage on the ultimate version. 10 seconds recharge on the regular, 6 seconds only on the ultimate. This is your Kazakh and this is the Kazakh of the other guy. What's up friends, this is Money and uh, after testing the ultimate version of Shock Train on the test server, I decided to give the actual normal Shock Train a try. Remember we were only running three ultimate Shock Trains and we were basically one-shotting Titans. Boom. <laughs> One hit Titan Slayer. <laughs> and yeah, now we're seeing a fully maxed Shock Train equivalent that is not the ultimate version in an effort to find out how insane is ultimate going to be going forward? What can we expect from War Robots ultimate items uh, in the future? When weapons are tested with being like literally six to eight times more powerful than their non-ultimate equivalent. After shooting with a regular shock train, I'll show you from the ultimate version the contrast comparison. Take a look at that invader. Let me tickle him real quick. Hold on and boom. Uh-huh. And this is how it looks like with ultimate. Boom! 100%! Now sure, this looks like fun when it's on the test server and not on the live server, but I would argue that they wouldn't test it if they didn't have some ambitions to make it happen in a somewhat similar state than this, right? And uh, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but that scares the living hell out of me, seriously. Now imagine this keeps going, uh, because it seems like these weapons getting more and more powerful as we go, uh, while Pixonic is getting more and more used to just selling these things to people. Insanely overpriced, of course, and behind loot boxes and whatever. And I can already see the comments, but Manny, these items are so exotic and impossible to obtain. People will not have full hangers of those. Yeah, they do. And I can tell you who it is. It's gonna be those people who don't care what something costs. They're just gonna buy it. And they're gonna have something at their hands that is 10 times more powerful than the same equivalent of item that you have. It lifts pay to win to a whole new level that we've never seen in War Robots before. And let's just look at the numbers for funs and giggles, okay? We have 22,600 damage on the regular shock train maxed and 130,000 damage on the ultimate version. 10 seconds recharge on the regular, 6 seconds only on the ultimate. Lock on time, a completely antiquated uh, 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 feature on the old one, and no lock on time on the new. So 6 times more damage per shot pretty much, with almost half as fast of a reload time, and then no lock on, that equals out to something being like 12 to 15 times more powerful, or to formulate the words differently, this is your Kazakh, and this is the Kazakh of the other guy. Now, I wish I could just say this is a good joke, and we all had a good laugh, thanks Pixonic, but this was tested on the test server, and although, okay, so far it's only there, um, there's probably a reason why it's being tested like that. Now, I'm seeing that it's probably going to be a, a, a little less broken when it comes out, uh, but... Um, yeah, I mean, you see where this is going, and I'm really worried about this. I can already see the comments. Oh, look, Manny's complaining again, but man, this is completely freaking insane. Imagine this becomes a normal thing now, and me as a YouTuber for War Robots gives Pixonic green light, says, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it. Um, and you have regular versions of weapons that kind of suck or are normal performing, and then you have the exclusive pay-to-win version that people can buy for exorbitant amounts of money and <laughs> just have 15 times the amount of performance in that weapon. It's like, and, and the robots too, it's, it doesn't stop there, right? And then ultimate drones, ultimate battleships, ultimate titans. <laughs> Dude, this, I mean, it, this, and it's not an impossibility, right? It's not like this comes, uh, like this is a completely crazy thought. <laughs> um, right now. So, yeah, I, I decided to make this video and to give you a bit of a, uh, a humoristic version of uh, of me being worried about something that uh, that I've seen on the test server and hopefully it just stays there, man. Seriously, man. Pixonic, get your stuff right. Dude, uh, if the weapon, like, let's look at the Pulsar. Pulsar, for example, was okay. The Pulsar version, the regular version, did normal and did a, does still does a good job. The Ultimate version it's hard to say exactly, I, I didn't calculate it, but I would say maybe it's like 25% more powerful than the regular version. Maybe 30%, 
right? But this is where it stops. And this is something where I can say, all right, that is 30% more power for the pay to win player, even though he's basically using the same weapon. That is already pretty critical, but man, 30%, at least you can kind of cope with that, right? You can, you can still fight back. You can still shoot back and probably even kill the dark guy. But if, so, if they have like 15 times <laughs> like this Cossack, yeah? I imagine how the game would be like. Uh, you just get you. You just cannon fodder for those who are just happy, uh, happily spending, and um, obviously this will drive away very quickly the remaining free-to-play players. And as such, then only the uh, a, a few the few whales will be r r uh, left, and they're not gonna enjoy uh, fighting the other whales. They like when they can steamroll those uh, free-to-play guys who just <laughs> go boop, and there he's going. You know, but if they have to fight the same thing on the other side, then, well, for a while it's a little challenge, and then it becomes like, mm, it's not really that kind of power gain feel that they are looking for. And uh, so they're gone too. And then, yeah, what happens then? So, I think this is a really bad idea, and um, I guess uh, I've showcased that here quite a bit. Uh, meanwhile, we're enjoying some ultimate punishers, which, by the way, are also a lot more powerful than the Punishers, but in this case, it's not even this problematic because the original Punishers are little, literally this useless that nobody would ever even remotely think about using them in the Champions League, right? So, you have the Ultimate version that performs like five times more than the Ultimate, uh, that the regular Punishers, but that just brings the Punishers back in line with other strong equipment. Um, which just shows how terribly pathetic the actual regular normal Punisher version just are. And in this case, I've always always asked for it, just make it better. Make the regular Punisher somewhat usable, but I feel like Pixonix sees them as a starter weapon only, and uh, they just don't have any interest in making the regular Punishers even just remotely usable in the Champions League. Um, and so the ultimate version was the maximum thing we we could get or expect from Punishers. Uh, or, f f yeah, it's the maximum amount of love for Punishers. Um, uh, but in that case, you know, it wasn't even a big deal. Because uh, uh, it, it just performs like a strong weapon now, but not crazy. Um, but, yeah. The one thing I always said uh, many of times, and I wish Pixonic would just listen to that and make it happen, is to scratch the lock-on time, at the very least. Just look at these performance differences between the regular shotgun, uh, sh shock train and the ultimate one, and then ask yourself, why in the world does the regular one still have to suffer from a lock-on time? Like, for the love of God, just remove it already, right? It is an antiquated relic of the old days where something like this was still there, but it's not, has no place in the game anymore, and that goes for all weapons having a lock-on, including Vortex, including Shock Train, Zeus, whatever the heck you look at, right? It is, the Ultimate Ion doesn't have a lock-on time now, does it? And the Zeus, as the heavy and more powerful, technically more powerful version of it as a heavy weapon, still runs a, a lock-on time that forces you to equip a pilot skill to still suck after all, right? You still have to wait. You can't shoot instantly once somebody drops out of stealth and before they engage the next stealth on a, mm, let's say, for example, a, a Lynx robot or something, right? Uh, you you would have to, um, yeah, you would have to, uh, no, the uh, Orochi, sorry, the Orochi robot that has multiple stealths and can just re-engage into the next one. Try, uh, try locking on, even with the pilot skill and uh, minus 70% lock-on time to that guy. In the meantime, it's not oh. gonna happen, right? So you're missing out on so many shots and you know, I know Pixonic isn't particularly uh, happy with me at the point, but, you know, I don't care about this, and they should be professional uh, too, and not care about something like that, and actually just do what's best for the game, and that means sometimes maybe I actually say something that is worth listening to, and Lock-On's time could simply lose the game, uh, like, could simply exit the game right now. And uh, I, I don't think there's even just one player in the game who says, no, no, I like my Lock-On time, man, please, leave me, leave it be. Come on, man, just scratch the whole damn thing. Because um, uh, evidently, or very obviously, that is not even what makes the ultimate version more powerful in the end, right? Uh, but I feel like I'm talking against the brick wall right there. Um, <laughs> at this point, I get the feeling like whatever I say, the opposite is going to happen. Um, maybe I should say, hey, guys, 
I love that these old weapons have the lock-on time. You should definitely not consider removing them. Um, so just ke keep them in, right? It's <laughs> Maybe then Pixonic is actually going to do it. I don't know. It's getting funny at that point. Here we're testing, uh, or I was testing, the uh, Shion, I think the weapon is called on the uh, test server there. The... Um, yeah, it's now on the live server, by the way, so it's... I, I have a video with this coming up as well, where uh, these things are being slapped onto a robot that was very recently the number one top most dominating beast in the game, and uh, and that then got a big strong nerf, and now it's like a shadow of its former self, but I slapped these weapons on, and this thing is back in the ring. It's back in the meta. So that's one of the upcoming videos uh, on the live server directly. And uh, I know what you're thinking. You're like, hmm, okay. So he's talking off Yon. Or is he talking Ohokochi? Or is it maybe the Kyuri because the turrets have been nerfed? What could he be talking about? Hmm. You'll find out once the video comes out. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a fun time here. I tried to make this a bit of a humoristic sketchy, uh, humor, uh, sketch type of video with uh, with the comparison between uh, the regular and uh, ultimate version of Shock Train. But at the same time, I do believe it is a serious topic and it should be taken seriously, especially by Pixonic, um, who, who should have the greatest in interest in making sure their game is going to run healthy and fine. Right, and uh, and people are going to be able to enjoy it, and not just only 0.1% of those. Uh, who, actually, it's not like 0.1%, it's probably like one or two percent of the players who are going to have uh, multiple ones of those ultimate items because they're just going to buy them. Um, and uh, yeah, and it, this is like an instant guaranteed win button, and I just don't think that has any place in a competitive shooter in a multiplayer environment. It, it, it's just. Uh, the very idea of having a competitive multiplayer game and then pay to winning in that, I mean, the, that very idea is already so disgusting, but it's almost already like normal in today's world, right? But I mean, there have to be a red line and I'm raising my red flag here with the ultimate shock train. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Money off.